So hello guys, what's up and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's me, your girl, Barista Neze, Neze Mwa, Neze Pepe Rempe. <laughs> and this is Neze Real. Guys, a lot has been happening on social media of late. And I've been meaning to do this video, but I had so many vlogs piled up. In fact, some were getting stale, some were getting lost. And I'm like, oh my God, let me just finish with these vlogs before we go back to sitting down and gisting about some important things. Because I know that many of you do enjoy this our sit down chit chat where we spill a lot of knowledgeable stuff so first of the things that trended on social media that caught my attention was this annie macaulay two-face and the family issue yes annie macaulay called out her husband on social media which is wrong if you are not willing to end a marriage please don't call your spouse out Calling your spouse out means you have decided as in 100% to be out of that marriage. But anyways, she made her mistakes and she has apologized. She called out her husband and surprisingly, her husband didn't respond. Instead, it was his own brother that responded. <laughs> Lambasting Annie Macaulay, accusing her and her mother of witchcraft and so many other evil vices. And I was like, brother. Even if you don't respect your brother's wife, at least respect your brother. Another one was this BB Niger Maria and her married lover saga, her Dubai based married lover saga. And Kubana chief priest came out calling out Maria that she's dating his sister's husband and she's responsible for the crash of their marriage or the challenges they're having in their marriage. And before one could say Jack, the husband, the alleged adulterer, the husband's brother, came out to lambast his brother's wife that she's this, she's that and I'm like, where is the loyalty that stays in family? Why are we seeing so many families coming out to call out their brother's wives, accuse her of prostitution, witchcraft and all sorts of things and that informed my decision to do this video and in this video, we're going to be talking about types of families to be very wary getting married into marriage is a lifelong engagement you have to be very careful there's some situations that i love you and he loves me i love him he loves me does not solve oh, hey marriage is deeper than i love him and he loves me so i'm going to be talking about things red flags signs families that you should be very wary about before getting married into and i'm going to be topping it up with what to do the solutions if you're already married in this kind of family stay glued the first family that you should be very wary <laughs> in fact when you see them let your leg where you are running eh? let the back of your leg be touching here also 440 the first family that you should be very mindful of getting married to is a diabolic family satanic diabolic families that witch hunt one another there's some families that brother kill brother sister envy sister son kills another son for plot of land there's some very diabolic family a family that when you go to visit your husband you can't even go to your husband's village because your husband will tell you if you step to the village this person will kill you there's a fight his brother doesn't want to see him you know a home of enmity and diabolical vices that brothers will go at any length to witch hunt and to kill one another that is not a family that you want to belong to or you want to raise children in i admit that sadly in some homes there are some mild envy and you know that race to want to so your family will see that you are shining but i'm not talking about that mild envy i'm talking about full-blown jealousy that can even go to the extent of one child wanting to terminate the other child such kind of homes <laughs> you might not find peace there a home that a brother cannot visit his brother and eat without suspicion that the food has been poisoned or the drink has been poisoned or you cannot leave i can imagine these my sons that i'm raising to love one another they want we now start thinking wanting to kill another that is a very ugly situation to find yourself in a home where brothers kill and witch hunt one another sisters kill and witch hunt one another there is unnecessary suspicion for me that is a big no-no well on the other hand for those that are already married to this kind of families the only advice i can give you is to tighten your spiritual belts that is the only way out that is the only escape route for me when i was getting married i asked god see god i don't have power when I go to work in the morning, come back at night, I'll start facing my children, doing homework, cooking, cleaning the house, making sure everywhere is okay. 
then I will then enter YouTube, start editing till 1 a.m. I'm going to work the next day, then from that 1 a.m., you don't expect me to not enter mountain and start praying against spiritual force, killing me, which hunting my husband's brother. Hey, hey, die by fire. I don't get power. So for me, that was one of the things I looked out for. I didn't want to enter a room where it's one spiritual battle after another. Spiritual attack after another. So yes, sadly, you just have to be very spiritual, very prayerful. Midnight prayer, you have to be very spiritually fortified. If per adventure you're married into a family where witchcraft and diabolic practices is the order of the day. The second kind of family that you should be very, very mindful of, <laughs> if you have your way, do not even go into it. I would not advise any woman to go into this kind of family. <laughs> is a family where you are not loved. A family that hates you. <laughs> Sometime last year, I followed Soma Aku. I don't know if you guys know or watch Soma Aku. I followed her story on her marriage story. There are some circumstances that love is not enough. My husband loves me. I love him. That is all that matters. It's in the movie zone and it's in Mills and Booms <laughs> novels. In real life, there are so many other factors that can influence a marriage to be happy and peaceful or to be a living Hell. If you followed Stomach's story, as I mentioned earlier, you would see that there was love between her and her husband. They loved each other. But there were other forces, family forces, that contributed to the crash of that marriage. If you are coming into a home, the mother does not like you. She hates you. She doesn't want you for her son. The, the sisters despise you. The brothers hate you. The father does not want to see you. Then you want to go there and say, my, my husband loves me. If that husband is not very strong, Hmm. He has to be very strong. Do you know the meaning of strong? Just as Peter of Peace Square defended Lola, his wife, to the last, and now that those family they've made up, it can never be the same, but at least they have accepted what it is. It is what it is, right? If you don't have a husband that has such a very strong resolve and can put his feet down and shoulder you, protect you, girl, you are heading for hot soup. Pepper soup. Pepper soup is what you are going into. Because there are times in that marriage that chips will be down and you will need your in-laws to be on your side. Your husband loves you today. He's not going to love you every day of that marriage. There are some times in that marriage that <laughs> that's lovey-lovey. In fact, it's almost be like hate. <laughs> you guys will not be able to see eye to eye or stand each other. That's when his family will not stand firmly beside you. When that man is misbehaving, his mother will call him to order. And when that man sees that... He cannot fight you, fight his sisters, fight his mother, fight everybody. He's going to have a rethink and begin to act right. But when it's you against the whole world, he has the support of his whole family to maltreat you. Girl, it's going to be a very, very tough battle. It's, diff it's more difficult for the women, for the man. <laughs> when a man has married you, he can even if your family does not like him, that's not his business because he's not going to your family. You are the one coming to his family, bearing his name, going to his village. Your children will bear his name. So you are the one leaving your home and going to him. So it is even much more important for the woman. It is much more important for the woman for her husband's family to like you. So even if your in-laws are not head over heels in love with you, like my own in-laws, people's situation differ. At least let them be the minimal acceptance. Any family that does not accept you, you better be ready for every day kissing ass, Every day licking ass, every day trying to please people that will not see anything good in what you do. Ask yourself, are you ready for that kind of marriage? Can you do that? Do you have a spouse that can stand giddy bam beside you when push comes to shove? If you don't, please have everything. The next kind of family that you shouldn't look forward to marrying into, you should shine your eyes. If you're still single, you have a chance of changing it. That you should be very careful before getting married into is a family with bags and baggages. A family with a very faulty background. There's a reason why Igbos, before they get married, they go for research. We call it Ijoa Juju. They go to ask questions. Because trust me, some characters, some attitudes are hereditary in nature, just as some medical conditions can be inherited by a child. Some characters are inherited from the father or mother down to the children. Apart from the hereditary part of it, a lot of behavioral traits are also learned. So 
So before you jump into a family, it's always important to know their values, their core values. There are some families that do not see anything wrong in a man committing adultery. The mother would even give her husband condom. Hey, instead of you to carry disease and give me, take her, go enjoy yourself. Then you don't want to have a husband that comes from this kind of upbringing and you want to restrict him to monogamy. There will be fights. There are some families too that the women are the heads of the homes. The husbands or their husbands cannot say a word. The wife can even give the husband a very dirty slap. The men of the house are just in one corner. They can't talk. The women are the ones that tell them what to do, when to do it. There is physical and emotional abuse and trauma on the man's part. The woman bosses over and lots over her husband. You know, there's no father-mother balance and understanding. Be careful because there's a very high chance that offsprings from that kind of marriage, you marry a lady from that kind of marriage and you expect her to be submissive and listen to you, you're on your own. So whatever is important to you, remember deal breakers come to play. There's some people that fine, they are okay, they can deal with it. But if you know that these are your deal breakers, then be very mindful marrying from people that have that kind of background or upbringing. Because inadvertently, forces outside their control will propel them to start exhibiting the streets even when they don't want to. Another definition of bag and baggage is under this point is entitled in-laws, dramatic in-laws. It doesn't have to be, bag and baggage does not only mean marrying from a family that is not well to do. You can marry from a family of lowly or humble beginnings but they are very content and peaceful. But there are some families that it is war in that home. War! Sister-in-laws will come into the home, take over, fight you, beat you. Your husband cannot even talk. Your mother-in-law, huh, maybe out of her nasty attitude she has left her husband, she has time, enough time to come into your home and scatter the home. You see, families with bag and baggages, entitled families, families that feel that it is their brother's house. It is like my brother's money. My brother is supposed to see me through school and get me a job. I, I'm getting a ritual for me in my brother's house. I'm going to chop the belly full. No woman can tell me the way to eat, what to eat in my brother's house. It is my brother's fridge. It is my brother's food. <laughs> Girl, be ready for in the boski. <laughs> in the boski war in that house. You have to be wearing trouser and be tying your trouser for fights. Are you ready? Is this something you can do? So once you come into a family and you are seeing those traits and your husband is not well mounted, <laughs> you are seeing those traits, mama's boy, you marry into a family of mama's boy where everybody's claws and your husband and your husband is helpless. My dear sister, you should be ready for serious battling. So families where your in-laws are not contented, they are problematic, they are entitled, is definitely one family to look out for. Now, on the other hand, if you're married to this kind of family, I think that it's in your best interest to live, reside far away from where those other families are. Do not stay in the same town with them. And from the onset, you need to let your husband understand the true concept of boundaries. And not just your husband, your in-laws. Anything that you know you're not capable of tolerating in the long run, please do not start it. Set the rules straight from the beginning and let everybody know what is tolerable by you and what is not. And that is that for families with bags and baggages. The next family, which will be controversial, but listen to my point, and if you have a different point, please let us know in the comment section. The next family that you should be very careful when married into is a family of a toxic single parent. Single parenting on its own, as I keep saying, is not a crime and it's not a sin. There are several well-balanced children that have come out from single parenting. I personally would not advise any man or woman to remain in a marriage, a toxic marriage, a marriage that is capable of ridding you of all your joy, peace, happiness, and even potentially endangering your life just because you want to stay married. No! Marriage is not by force. If it's not working, you've tried your best, you've given your all, and the marriage is heading nowhere. There is no crime in separating from such a partner. Now, how that separation, the toll that that separation takes on that person will now determine whether it's advisable to marry a child or a product or an offspring from that single parenting. There are some people that 
a single parent as a result of the death or demise of their spouse. There are some that may be due to distance, separation, irreconcilable differences. Some have even made mistakes in their marriage and they learned from their mistakes and turned out to be responsible individuals. But there are some that single parenting really messed them up. They ended up exerting toxicity in their children, exerting hate and bad blood into their children. Children that come out of that environment hmm, find it very difficult to stay married or to make a very happy marriage. One can grow up with a single parent and grow up in peace, in love, understanding, respect for others. But some, the parents have so polluted, the single parents that they grew up with have so polluted their idea of life, their ideologies, the, their concept of marriage. Those kind of wrong orientations can take a toll on the psyche of these children when they grow up and you see them applying all these wrong ideologies that they've learned from a toxic single parent in their marriage when they get married, making marriage hell and unbearable for their partners. Let me tell you something, has this never happened to you? Some behaviors that you despised your parents doing, maybe as a lady, let me just use a lady for example, there's some behaviors that you despised your mother doing, maybe shouting at you for no reason, maybe shouting at you instead of communicating in a low, low tone, or maybe one or two behaviors that we despised as children. Have you found out that, have you seen that now as an adult, you find yourself doing these things? That is how it works. There's some behaviors that by reason of being in an environment and watching and growing up in that environment gets infused in your DNA that you start acting it out as an adult. So getting married to a child from a single parent from a single parent is absolutely amazing. But getting married to a child from a toxic and bitter background has lots of detriments. So what are the solutions if you find yourself in that kind of situation? Well, if that person is open to therapy, it's advisable that that person should go through therapy because that is like a mini trauma that that person has gone through. If the person is not open to therapy like many of our African, <laughs> African husbands and daddies, <laughs> all you have to be doing is you have to be very patient. It's not easy changing an adult. The only way you can easily change an adult is an adult in diapers, right? That's what they say. So you have to easily try to change the mindset of that adult. It takes a lot of time, it takes patience, and it takes willingness on the part of that adult. It's not an easy thing to do, but God on your side, there could be results. The last type of family that you should not get married into, do not avoid it. Mm. I think I'll leave that one for you guys. <laughs> so I'm throwing this question, I'm leaving this slot and throwing these questions back to you guys, my audience and subscribers. What are your deal breakers when it comes to getting married into a family? What kind of family would you not want to get married into? And even if you are married, what kind of family would you advise your children? Maybe due to experience or what you have known or what you know now as an adult, what kind of family would you advise your children not to get into or not to? not to marry into do let us know in the comment section so guys this video has finally come to an end do let me know your thoughts in the comments right yes let me know let me know the part of what i said appeals to you and which part of this video didn't appeal to you so make it interactive and drop all your feedback in the comment section if you're new to our channel of course don't forget to subscribe and turn on your bell notifications give this video a thumbs up and stay glued on nezaville it's me your girl it's me, your girl, Barista Neze, Neze Umwa, Neze Peperempe, and this is Neze Real. I'll see you guys in my next one, guys, for now. Bye. Mwah, mwah.